No, now you are. No, Hi. Okay. So, uh, these are supposed to be the zeros of a polynomial. First of all, let's look at this guy right here, 4 plus i. Where does, how, when you are finding the zeros of a polynomial, how would you wind up coming with 4 plus i? I hear some sounds that sound like words, negative that negative sound like they're right. What's that? Square rooting a negative number. Square rooting a negative number. Now, how, how do you come about a square root in the, in the zero binding process? There's a number squared. Who said that? I did. Is she lying? She's just stealing them? This is still on your fire, Chance. No, Chance is good. Chance is good. Chance is good. Chance is good. Chance Okay, so we square root yeah. a negative number because we use the quadratic formula? Yeah. Yes? Yeah? Okay, so when we use the quadratic formula, is this usually what we find, just a 4 plus i? No. What do we also find? 4 minus i. 4 minus i. Right? Imagine with me for a second. You got this plus or minus the square root of uh, negative 1, right? That happened in the quadratic formula. And then 4 plus or minus, well, that's just called i, so we call it i. Well, they forgot to tell us the minus i. And if we're to assume that when we find this polynomial it has uh, coefficients that are rational numbers, right, and are even real for that matter, then we have to have this other imaginary zero, complex zero. If we don't, when we multiply all this stuff together, you can imagine our answer, our polynomial, would have i's in it. Does that seem possible? Well, if we didn't put this other zero in there, if we didn't have this one, and we only had this one, and you multiply all that stuff together, yeah, you're going to wind up with an i in your polynomial, which we don't want. Okay, And that's our assumption. Our assumption is that we won't wind up with i's in the polynomial itself. Okay. All right. So there we go. We, we also found this other zero that they, let's say, forgot or neglected to tell us. We assume they come in pairs. What are these two things called? Someone that starts with C? C-O. C-O-N. J-U. Conjugations. Conjugate. 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 Okay, the noun, conjugate. Conjugates are things that have identical numbers, it's just that the middle side is different. 4 plus i, 4 minus i. 3 plus a, 3 minus a. 4 plus q, 4 minus q. These are all conjugates. Okay? So, these, these guys, these complex numbers, these complex zeros, come in pairs, conjugate pairs. So, what does 5 tell us about the polynomial? Minus five is a factor. Squared. Because we need to be able to put five in there and get zero in this factor, right? Because then we want that factor to multiply by this factor, by this factor, by this factor, and get zero. How do you know it's four factors? How do we know it's four factors? Because, because, you three three because four plus i, four minus i are two. But you simply zero, so we have <laughs> one, two, three, four zeros, which should give us four factors. Well, originally we only had three zeros. How do you know they're not? Oh, so how do I know there's not more? Yeah. Okay, so that's a good question. A very good question. I like Gordon's questions. Uh, we don't know that. There could be other zeros, right? They didn't say these are the only zeros. So we're going to assume that they're the only zeros. We would like to have the, if you read the directions with me, which you probably won't, but here they are in 5.7. Here it says this. Write a polynomial function of least degree. Right? More functions, higher degree. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Agreed? Okay. <laughs> yeah. That rational, uh, that has rational coefficients, leading coefficient of one, and the given zero. So those take care of all of what I'll call Gordon questions. Couldn't there be more zeros? Couldn't there be more factors? Couldn't there be a number outside here, like two? Yes, there could, but then it would violate all this stuff we just said. Least degree, least number of factors. Leading coefficient of one, meaning all these should be starting with x and not 2x or 3x or something like that. Some ridiculous number. Okay. So this factor also in x minus 5. See, 
See how we take the 0 and we put it into the factor in the form of x minus the 0, right? That will always work. Let's just have a sidebar over here. If we had a polynomial, a simpler one, 5, negative 3, negative 1, x minus 5, there are these factors, put 5 in there and you get 0, okay? Here, x minus negative 3 gives us x plus 3, negative 3 minus a negative 3 will be uh, 0, and x minus negative 1, right? My point here is, whatever the 0 is, uh, let's call this 0a. Right? Everybody catch on what I'm saying there? We take the 0 and we can say x minus that 0. Because if we plug the 0 in there, right there for x, and we subtract a, we're going to get 0. Okay? So if 4 plus i is a 0, we can just say x minus 4 plus i and x minus 4 minus i. That zero goes there and that one there. Okay? Good guys. Uh, uh, check for you over here. How's everybody doing? Yeah? Uh, no. I'm just uh, distributed. Right. We'll, we'll distribute those as soon as I'm sure everybody is okay with this. Like, this all makes sense. 4 minus i makes sense. x minus 4 plus i makes sense. I believe that I put parentheses around it. That makes sense. Okay? Get one step closer to doing it on your own here. Okay. So let's continue on. We have, uh, well, we can multiply these together. That wouldn't be too hard. x squared minus 10x plus 25. That's great. We're going to even multiply that by the result of this. Now let's talk about this. Okay. I showed you last time what happens here, but that's not the easiest thing to see, so we're going to see it again. Right. Um, I'm going to skip the in-between step for a second, and then I'll fill in the blank. What's going to happen, what we are going to get, okay, uh, is we are going to get uh, Actually, I'm going to put one more step in between. This next step, I'm going to say distribute the negative. x minus 4 minus i, and x minus 4 plus i. And I'm going to group these together. I'm going to group those together to, to show you something. This is the same as this. This is the same as this, right? The only difference is the plus and the minus. They're conjugates. This is a conjugate of that. This is a conjugate of that. Because we change it to just the sign in the middle like this. When you multiply conjugates together, something pretty cool happens. Okay. If we treat this as one entire thing, we, we don't distribute the individual pieces of x at negative 4, but just treat it as one big block of x minus 4. Here's what we'll get. x minus 4 squared plus 1. Okay. Really, if you want to think about it, it's 1 squared. I'll show you why. Uh, well, first we're going to distribute the x minus 4 to the x minus 4. We're going to get x minus 4 times x minus 4. Okay. Here we're going to get uh, 1, negative 1i one squared, and plus 1i squared. So negative i times i, what's negative i times? Positive i. Negative i squared. Squared. Negative i times i. Negative i squared. Negative i squared. Now what's i squared? Negative one. Negative one. Right? Negative one times negative is positive one. Right? Um, so in the middle, what's going on here? What, you know, why do we lose this piece? If we do x minus 4 times i, we get positive x minus 4 times i, and then we distribute the negative i to x minus 4, we get minus x minus 4 times i. Everybody follow? Ian? Yeah. Good? 50-50. Yeah. 
X minus 5 times I minus, or sorry, X minus 4 times I minus X minus 4 times I, what's that? That just cancels out. Cancels out. One thing minus itself, zero. So that's why we don't have anything here in the middle, okay? Imagine another scenario where we, we still have conjugates. Here, let me uh, show you over here. Let's make up two other imaginary conjugates to multiply together, because that's probably the hardest part of this problem, okay? So pause. And let's make up two other uh, conjugates that have complex numbers involved. Okay, it looks a lot like this. How about x minus three plus two? Let's say three i and x minus three minus three i. The helpful thing here, the thing that that you may not think to do, that once you distribute this negative which you'll always have to do, distribute the negative, distribute the negative, is grouping this x minus whatever. Okay? Grouping those together so that you treat it as, as two identical things. Right? So we get x minus 3, the whole thing, times x minus 3, we get x minus 3 squared. What's next? Distribute the same thing to negative three i. To the negative three i. And what does that give us? Negative x. Negative x minus three. Times three i. Times three i. Now what? next is it in our distribution process. We just distributed the x minus 3 to the x minus 3 and also to the negative 3i. Now the 3i to the x minus 2. Now the 3i to the x minus 3. I'm going to get much faster. Okay, so 3i times x minus 3, that's going to be positive x minus 3 times 3i. And then the 3i to the, <coughs> and the, 3i to the negative 3i, which will give us? Negative nine i squared. Yeah, that's good. Well, what happens in the middle here? Cancels out. Cancels out. We got opposites here, so we get zero. X minus three squared. What's i squared? One. Negative. negative one. See how we'll always wind up with an i squared, which will always be negative one, which will always give us because this will always be negative. Right, because it'll always be a positive times a negative. This will always be negative. This will always be negative one. So we'll always get plus this number squared. Intriguing. Very. That's x minus three squared plus nine. Yep. And this is x minus four squared plus one. Now let's just figure, you know, finish this one out real quick. X squared minus six x plus nine. That's this. Plus this nine x squared plus 6, x plus 18. That's sick, dude. Yeah, dude. Of course. <laughs> Why are you going to be so different from all the people? <laughs> Who are the same? Why are you going to be so different in such a different way? Why are you different in a slightly the same way? That's not true. I just said I was angry. When I said that's sick, dude, I was trying to get more. Anyway, x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus 1, right? Got 16 from 4 times 4, and then 1, okay? Uh, then x squared minus 10x plus 25 times x squared minus 8x plus 17. Do we need to finish this up? X to the 4 minus uh, 18 X. Is that distributed? Minus 18. Wait. Minus 18. Minus 18. Where'd you get the 18? Where'd you get the 18? Minus 80 X. Plus 80 X. Plus 80. Should we keep going? <laughs> yeah. Or do you think we're good? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Three and three. 
Here, let's color code it, because I love color coding things. Okay, red will be x squared being distributed. x to the fourth minus 8x to the third plus 17x squared. Orange yeah. will be the 10x minus 10x to the third plus 80x squared. 80, 80, 80, 80 squared. Yeah. Zero. Uh, minus 170x. And black will be the 25 uh, plus 25x squared. So this fun. Minus uh, 200x. Plus something that they four twenty-five. Four twenty-five. Whoa. Whoa, right, right in my own noggin. No. Not so yeah. yeah. paper. You um, just said oh well, roll the paper. It's my homework. Yeah. Oh, that's not as important. X to the fourth, right? That's the only fourth power there is. Then it'll slip to the third, third power, third power, there's only two of them. Negative eighteen X to the third. This is like the best part of algebra. So relaxing. <laughs> 17x squared plus 80x squared, that's 97x squared. Plus 25. What? Plus 25? 97? 122. What? 122. Plus 122x squared minus 370x plus 425. That makes me want to grind my face against the cheese grater. That's oh, yes. a terrible image. <laughs> okay. Any questions about any part of this? Because we're about to do it again, but without. Oh, oh, oh that was a lot of numbers. You're oh, going to have to bro. practice and then just take the test and oh. ask a question like this without yeah, trying no. and then Water. not knowing what it's doing. That would be so much better. That's getting old. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. Okay, so it's gonna you're gonna do some work, and you're gonna pass your work on to one of the other groups, and they're gonna undo your work. Okay, we're gonna see if your work holds up, and we're gonna see if each of you knows how to do each part of this. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask you to, in each of your groups, together, work together. Did you hear about the part where you work together? No. Yeah. Okay, work together. Okay, and I want you to all you're all going to make a polynomial, and then when you pass it to the other groups, they're going to find the zeros of that polynomial. Does that make sense? It has to be an actual polynomial. Identify the polynomial. I'm going to ask each group. They're going to make a different polynomial. It's going to, some of it's going to be up to you. I want you to make a polynomial that has one real zero. E first. One real zero. And two imaginary zeros. Actually, I shouldn't say the word imaginary because it's a little more than that. It's complex, okay? That's one that looks like this, two complex zeros. Complex is A plus B, I, right? It's a number of plus or minus with okay, two complex zeros. Now, complex zeros uh, in conjugate pairs, remember that, that's why I said two complex zeros. So, right, A plus B, I, is minus B, I. Let's put A plus B, I. It's just so and now we write a problem from that. So I want you to decide what the one real zero is. Maybe it's three, maybe it's negative seven, whatever you decide. You decide what the complex zeros are. You make the polynomial, okay? And then once you're done and you have made your polynomial, you're gonna pass it to another group. That group's gonna have to find the zeros again, right? So they should find the zeros that you chose in the first place. So you gotta make sure your work is right. Get to work, but that's only a third degree, right? Not fourth degree like what we just did, just three. Go. You have to do it first.